cap lying where it fell between the rails. The driver was fortunately unhurt. Danger is never very remote from the submarine service and occasionally danger develops into tragedy when the underwater vessel dives and fails to rise again. Do you remember the M2 of whom these pictures were taken? She disappeared off Portland in 1932 with 60 gallant men aboard. Sometimes tragedies come in pairs and the drama of the Squalus accidentally sunk a week ago off the coast of America seems now to have provided but a harrowing prelude to the story of the Thetis. 33 of the Squalus crew were rescued by means of a diving bell. 26 were drowned in the flooded sections of the hull. Britain rejoiced with America in the salvation of so large a number of the Squalus complement. Now the sympathy of a country which has so lately experienced similar emotions will be extended to the distressed and bereaved in Britain's tragedy. A member of the Triton class of 1,090 tons, the Thetis was launched last year. She was on her acceptance trials when the accident occurred. Come down below and get a sense of what it feels like to be cribbed and confined in a small compartment below the ocean. The officer of the periscope is Captain, then Lieutenant Commander Orem, who was aboard the Thetis and came up by Davis escape apparatus to direct the salvage operations. This apparatus was adopted as standard by the Royal Navy after the Poseidon tragedy in 1931, and all submarine ratings are trained in its use. Through a double hatch, sailors are released one by one and float to the surface, fed by oxygen in cylinders strapped to their body. It's an effective device responsible for saving many lives, but its value depends on the hatches being free. When the Thetis dived and failed to reappear, alarm only developed gradually. Then warships and planes were hurriedly dispatched to the spot where she was last seen. A flying boat located her and flashed the news to the destroyer Brazen. Thus began the dramatic efforts to rescue the 89 occupants of the Thetis, her nose buried in the seabed, her stern protruding 18 feet at low tide above the surface. Rowing boats patrol the area around the tail of the vessel, which is canted at an angle of 30 degrees, hoping to pick up survivors as they rise through the water, equipped with their Davis escape gear. But only four such rescues have been made. What is going on in the confines of that steel cylinder of which only the tail is visible? Mystified anxiety deepens as the hours roll by and no new attempts to escape are made. Have the hatches been jammed? Are they buried in the mud? The lighting will have failed by this time. It must be pitch dark inside. Imagination is appalled at the ordeal of those 85 men entombed below the surface, yet so near to rescue. Pity too, the anxiety of relatives grouped around Camel Laird's yard where the Thetis was built. Hope sustains, fear harrows the hearts of those awaiting news which will cheer or render them forlorn. <laughs> One of the survivors reaches land. Mr. Shaw, an employee of Camel Laird. Enveloped in a lamy jacket and hood, he is driven away from the quayside one of the last two men to leave the Thetis alive. Will it ever be known what happened in the submarine after he'd come through the hatch? The tail of the vessel, which had stood up so prominently out of the water, begins to disappear as the tide rises. The small boats are standing away now, their place is taken by the salvage boat and tugs. Look carefully as our aeroplane flies overhead, and you will see the tail of the Thetis just visible alongside the nose of the Vigilant. As we pass again, you can see the men on the salvage boat working to hold the position of the tail steady. We know now that all these efforts were in vain. When the tide ebbed, the Thetis had sunk further into the mud so that the stern failed to show above water again. Slowly, hope faded, and the nation, which for three days had talked and thought of little else than this tragic drama, watched the doom of that brave company sealed with ineffable sadness. We can be sure of this, that sailors and civilians alike they met death with a courage worthy of a race that triumphs in adversity, that in their pitiful end, as in the days of their gallant service, they upheld the noble traditions of the Royal Navy.